Hey guys, welcome to the Ride of Photo. Today we're going to talk about a really neat uh, thing that I learned early on and I'm so glad I did because it's very important, especially for uh, beginners and enthusiasts that just haven't gotten really deep into how the camera works. So right after the intro, we'll delve deep and, and try to figure out what is the manual mode. Okay, as I said in the beginning part of this video, uh, we're going to be talking about the manual mode, and I'm so glad I learned about the manual mode early on. I actually did before I even got a DSLR. I was still using my tablet as a camera uh, when I learned about the manual mode, and I was so excited. I really wanted to get a DSLR once I learned that because I figured out all you can do with uh, photography and how you can change, manipulate what the, your camera did so that you got the image that you actually wanted. So that's why I am really glad I learned that early on. Let's first talk about how a camera works. You have three different parts of the manual mode um, that also uh, corresponds to different things the camera does to get an image. And one of those, if you look inside your camera, is a... You see, uh, first of all, if you have a DSLR, you see a mirror. First, first off, you take your a lens off, you can see uh, a mirror. And if you want to experiment with this, you can go into manual mode, and it doesn't really matter what the setting is. You can just press the shutter, and you see that the uh, sen you see the sensor after that. And so there are two different things. There's the mirror, and there's the shutter behind that you can lift that up, just be careful, you can lift the mirror up and see the shutter behind the mirror and so these can set to be open longer or shorter and that and the longer it is uh, the more light gets into your camera and the smaller the amount of time that is open the less uh, light you get and then the second part of the camera that helps to take photos is inside the lens. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Um, there is, you have to take the lens off your camera to see it, but there's a little tiny uh, hole that's called the aperture, and it can, and you can see that it can be opened uh, very wide or closed to a very t tiny hole. And so that also changes how much light gets into the camera, uh, which is called exposure. That's how much light overall gets into your camera uh, and the third which is kinda slightly not a physical part but just how the camera uses the sensor is ISO which changes the uh, sensitivity of the sensor to light so the more sensitive it is to light of course the brighter it will be so all these all these three aspects that of the camera how the camera works um, changes how much light gets um, how much light gets to be your final image so uh, it could be super bright uh, you get a lot of light the more bright the image would be if you don't get as much light uh, you'd have a very dark image now if you go to manual mode you will see that there is the first number at least like in my setup on my Nikon you can see the first number that you see is the is a fraction and that's how uh, fast the shutter speed goes. It's called the it's called the shutter speed. That measures how much of a second that it's open. So if it ha if it's usually it's usually around one one hundredth of a second, which is a good uh, just average speed. You can go down to uh, around one fiftieth of a second if you're very steady with the camera. That's one thing is that the the longer the shutter is open. The more it, and if the camera moves during that, it will be blurry, a blurry image, because you're capturing a scene that is moving. And so, if you overlay that uh, movement all into one image, it's bl a blur. Anyways, uh, if we and if we have a higher shutter speed, you will have uh, you'll be able to freeze motion, including motion that you 
have through your hands to the camera. So if you're shaking your camera while you're taking a picture, if you have a higher shutter speed, it will not uh, show up as a blur. Um, and so that affects the image a lot because you can have very cool uh, different types of uh, techniques to capture either like high speed photography or if you're out in the dark or if you want to get some movement like if you're taking photos of water but you have the camera on a tripod so everything else is sharp only the things that move are blurred which includes water and that makes a nice dreamy look um, in the dark you can also use shutter speed open uh, make that shutter uh, speed slower so the light comes in, a lot more light comes in but you'll have to have it on a tripod so it d the camera doesn't move while that's happening and the other number you'll see next to a uh, letter F is it has to do with the aperture so the smaller the number the wider the aperture goes so you can if you want to change the aperture you can change it uh, just make it as uh, as the low lower it can possibly go for a certain for each lens lens it, it could be a different uh, aperture because different lenses um, can have different maximum apertures. So and if you have a very wide aperture, you don't get as much in focus in a scene. Like you have a depth in your scene, and what we you have your focus on, uh, if you move your focusing, you can focus on certain things in that scene and so on that there's that line of distance and so as you can see in this video right now I have things behind me that are blurry and that is because I have a very uh, wide aperture that is causing that the focus is on me but if it was a smaller aperture which lets li less light in by the way uh, you would have more in the scene and focus. I would have uh, more be more th the things behind me would be more sharp than it is right now. So that can be used in your photography to change your image, and especially in like portrait photography, you'd want that to be wide if you you're f trying to focus on one certain part of the face, or if you want the things behind the uh, subject, the person you're shooting do not be in focus but be nice and smooth so that it helps the person uh, direct their attention to the actual person and not everything that's cluttered behind them uh, that is a, a good useful way to use aperture now for the third ISO which also has its tradebacks if you if you count all these different things as tradebacks you, if you have a high shutter speed, like around 1600 or even higher than that, you will start to see a little bit of a grain uh, throughout your image or noise, which is like colored speckles all over the, your image, which is, is really annoying if it's really bad. And so if you have a, a low ISO so that um, the, the, the sensor is less sensitive to light, it will have a cleaner, it will make a produce a, a cleaner image. But if you have a high ISO so that you can get, so you can be sensitive to more light, uh, changing the exposure of the entire image, you will have some noise that you have to clean up either in post or maybe if you want to have that as a dramatic effect, like a kind of an old, if you have like a grainy uh, kind of noise, then that will actually kind of help. Uh, to tell a story if you're trying to tell a story with your image or be um, more artistic or just try try to draw, make the image more interesting by adding that noise if you want to or if you need to get a higher like, um, a shutter speed or something like that or a smaller aperture you may need to drive up the ISO so all of these three different aspects will change how much light uh, or how bright the image will be. So, in a normal uh, daylight uh, scene, you'll probably have uh, the shutter speed around like uh, one sixtieth of a second, and the aperture uh, pretty wide open. Usually, um, the lower end lenses 
like the kit lens that comes with your camera, uh, could be from a range of uh, f3.5 to f5.6, around that, and that's kind of small for a maximum aperture uh, if you're considering more pro lenses. Usually you can get a lot wider open. Anyways, that, if I set it to f5, I may need the ISO to be around 400 in a normal daylight situation. And I'm just guessing on this. So, And then if you're going inside a building that's slightly darker, you may need, you'd have to choose uh, what your priorities are uh, considering like your exposure. So if you're going into a dark scene, you may either want to uh, rise the ISO, which could cause noise or grain, or you need to make the aperture bigger or make a, l a longer time for shutter speed and that could cause uh, blur or could uh, make things out of focus that you'd want in focus so there are different or you could do all of those at the same time and kind of spread out how much the exposure needs to be changed so the great thing about manual mode is you have all of, the, all of this to work with your image and make the image what you want it to be. If you want it to be a blurry uh, action shot, so that you only see if you're you're panning with the with the person, if it's just someone running, uh, and you have a slow shutter speed, you get the person slightly um, in focus, but everything else is blurry, so that will like show uh, speed or things like that. So all of these different things, and especially in manual mode. Um, takes a lot of time to get used to so it t so I would recommend uh, watching a little bit a few more videos about manual mode uh, to just gain your experience just learning trying to figure out uh, what kind of things you want for your images and then also go out and gain experience doing it to, uh, you have to have a lot of practice it doesn't matter where you were shooting anywhere you can shoot anywhere trying to experiment with manual mode. It took me quite a while to uh, f fully figure out the manual mode and uh, don't be disappointed if it does take a while to uh, nail it and be able to change um, the shutter speed, aperture, uh, ISO when you need to and you'll definitely figure out um, after if you're, if you're really diligent you can get this done and I'm sure you can soon fully know the manual mode and understand it's it's great help for uh, getting the images that you want so guys thanks so much for watching I hope that you learned from this video and if you're a new watcher to, uh, to my videos uh, please check them out my channel uh, if you're watching this on a desktop you can click down here there should be an icon down here um, that can make you subscribe to my channel you can also go check out my channel if you're on like a mobile device you can look you can scroll down and see my icon you can click on that and it'll go straight to my channel so you can check out my other videos and hopefully you, can, you guys would like to subscribe and please like this video as well uh, thanks a lot for watching see ya guys